I prefer the term happy accident over mistake. Uh, I've made a lot of them while making smash burgers over the past three years. Here's 10 of them you can learn from so you can make an amazing smash burger for your family. So I got everything prepped up here on my sheet and tip number one for doing your smash burgers is 80-20 ground beef. I don't know why it's 80-20. I'm not a scientist. I'm just telling you, I've used 70-30. It's too much grease and you don't get the crust. I've used 90-10 because it's on sale. It's on sale a lot and I'm really cheap. But, so that's how I end up with the 90-10. But the 90-10 doesn't get juicy. It's, it, there's not enough fat and you're already smashing it thin and that seals in the juices. But there's not enough to go around with that 90-10 beef, you know what I mean? So I like to use that for ground beef then I don't have to like clean the pan out when I'm doing hamburger helper. Just saying, if you're too good for hamburger helper, you're at the wrong channel. But anyways, 80-20 is what you gotta use. I would definitely recommend do it. I, I just get the Kroger brand, but you can get something really nice if you want to, go to your local butcher. But make sure it's 80-20 ground beef. Tip number two is the portion size of your ground beef balls here. I don't like to go over a three ounce ball, okay? So this is just a pound, this maybe is how you're getting, maybe not. A lot of people might just cut it in fourths here and then just do four, four ounce balls, that's 16 ounces, that's a pound of ground beef. I don't do that, I, I think four ounces is too much. And here's why, because I don't think it smashes down as well and I just don't think you get the sear. You don't, so if you want more beef, double up your patties, do two three ounces on there. Do three of them, I don't care. Just don't go over three ounces. And that usually breaks out to about five balls out of this ground beef. But it's not easy to do, so a special trick you can use is using a one-third measuring cup. Boop. So this just is kinda gonna give us a loose estimate. And we should get about five, maybe six balls out of this just to see where we're at. So now that we got our meatballs, and they look pretty terrible, right? I mean, that's where they're at. They're not packed very well. We're gonna pack them. This is my next tip. Do not, and I repeat, do not over pack your meatballs, okay? I'm talking like four, little one, two, three, four. That's it. Walk away. That's it. I mean, it's like, I don't know if you've ever made muffins or you've seen a recipe where they're like 13 strokes with the whisk and then just stop and it looks lumpy. And they're like, no, that if you over mix a muffin, it gets dry. If you over pack this meatball, it's not going to get down flat and get that sear. So, I mean, literally like I do like four just to shape it. They don't need to be perfect. I don't even want to call them meatballs because then that makes you want to make them perfect. Like they're for spaghetti but they're not for spaghetti. They're smash burger balls. So four tops, just, you know, we'll do it again here. Just look, look how messed up this is. It's not even anything. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's it, that's it. Don't make it like a snowball, like you're gonna throw at your sibling when you're young and then they get a bloody nose and then mom's mad at you. Happened, I know from experience, but <laughs> just don't, don't do that. Just four, four little times in your hand and then you're good to go. Next. For our tips, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these little smash burger balls, we're not calling them meatballs because we're not gonna overpack them like meatballs. We're gonna put these little smash burger balls in the fridge. That's why you are located in the fridge right now. So we don't want them to come up to room temperature. Normally I like my meat to come up to room temperature, like steaks and stuff, but to really get that crust, we actually wanna keep them cold and then pull them out kinda last minute. So usually I'll toast the buns, get the veggies going, make sure the griddle's hot, do all that stuff. And then when I'm ready, I'll pull these things back out of the fridge and smash them on the griddle. Oh, shoot. Oh, almost forgot while I'm in here. Griddle temperature. Oftentimes people do not get their griddle to a high enough temperature. Four, 450 is okay. Ideally, you wanna get up to around like 500, in my opinion. I mean, you can get it hotter, you can get it rip roaring hot. I think five's enough but a lot of times people are doing these smash burgers around 375, 400. I mean, that's not gonna get the sear that you are looking for. If you don't have an infrared thermometer, I'd highly, highly recommend getting one 
not just for this cook, but for like everything you're gonna make on the griddle. You really need one. But it's gonna come in handy for this. You wanna make sure that this thing's rip roaring hot, on high, ready to go for when you're smashing that burger down. The first time I made smashed burgers, I made it in normal burger order. I just put the meat down and I was like, I'll just toast my buns and stuff afterwards. No, that's wrong. <laughs> These things cook so fast, especially if you got them in a three ounce ball, like I already told you, and you're smashing them down. And especially if you got your griddle super duper hot, like I already told you, they're like a minute and a half tops. I don't know. So, I mean, you want to toast your buns first. You're going to do saute some onions, some mushrooms. Maybe you want to do peppers, get wild with it. If you're doing any vegetables to go cook with it, like asparagus or something, all that needs to be done. All of that is done. This is the last thing you're putting on the griddle is these smash burgers because they're going to cook so, so fast. When you flip them, I mean, it's, it's almost not even necessary. They've almost cooked all the way through. You're flipping them to put the cheese on and then whoop, you're all done. Okay, you need to rub this burger. Well, all right, that sounds weird. You need to smash this burger and kind of rub it off on the sides and get everything down as thin as possible, okay? Sometimes people will just take a spatula down the middle and now then you got these fat sides on there and you don't, you don't want those fat sides like that. You want the whole thing as thin as possible. You want to see holes. I know, I know that sounds weird, you're like, but trust me, you'll want to see holes. The cheese will cover it up. It's not the prettiest burger. It's not what you're thinking like pub style burger in your head. It is, it is smashed down thin. It's supposed to look ugly. It still tastes delicious. So make sure you're smashing it down, all of it smashed down as thin as possible. And that's where a steak weight or a burger smasher really comes in handy. I saw this on the Angus Beef YouTube channel and I did it and I really think it helped. I put my burger sauce down on top of it after I smashed it. That's right, and then I flipped it in that sauce. And it just kinda helped make it juicy, put a little more flavor in there. It, it really, it's worth trying. I think it's good. I've heard of people just doing mustard. I think In-N-Out Burger, maybe somebody knows. Let me know in the comments if you know. I think In-N-Out Burger puts mustard on their burgers or maybe on their griddle or something. Uh, but this is the whole burger sauce that you make. Uh, I put that on there and then, you know, which could be whatever you like. A lot of times it's just like a hodgepodge of whatever you got laying around in your fridge. Looks like everything that would be at a cookout. It's like ketchup, mustard, mayonnaise, relish, maybe some onions and garlic. Mix it together. And I just put that on there and then flipped it and let it cook in that. And it, it turned out great. Great. I would highly recommend it. Another mistake I used to make is I would either salt and pepper the balls initially, and I don't really do that anymore. I kind of put them down, smash them on the griddle, then I salt and pepper them after they're on the griddle. It's just easier that way. They're so thin. I'm not concerned about doing both sides. I just do one side with salt and pepper. I also don't bring out my like shakers or my pepper grinder anymore. I, I put them in a bowl here so I can just pinch and go, pinch and go. Just like you would at a restaurant. They do this like at restaurants, so I have salt and pepper like this or just salt in a bowl because like I already went over, it's cooking super fast, super duper fast. You don't wanna be grabbing for other stuff, so make sure you're prepped ahead and I can just pinch out some salt and pepper and put it right in the burgers after I smash them. Spatula usage. All right, so you can use any spatula you want technically and you just kinda of can slide it from the side, coming on the side, coming on the side. However, if you have one with a beveled edge, you can see that has a beveled edge, it's angled. Even my dough scraper also has a beveled edge and I use that a lot. It's gonna get under that burger after you smash it, flip it over super duper easy. So you gotta get under there to get the crust. You gotta really get down there. You don't wanna like just scrape ground beef across your griddle. You wanna use the side of the spatula or a beveled edge one if you want. And you can even flip it over sometimes. So instead of going like this, I would go up and down like that. And that will really help get your burger up because you've leveraged the spatula down into it. So you know how to make a great smash burger, but do you know what you're gonna put on top of it? And have you ever heard of an inside out bun? Hmm, you should check out the video on your screen now then.